And now, it's time for another episode of the 12 Man Fan Jam Show. A show made by 12s from around the world, for 12s around the world. I'm Ozen, and here is your host and my dad, the self-appointed Reverend Moses of the St. Paul Island Church of Seahawk Positivity. Yes, welcome one and all to episode 810, the Green Vikings edition of your 12-man fan jam show as the Seahawks get ready to take on those Minnesota Vikings on Sunday night football. So please put your trade table up, place your seats back in the full upright position, settle in with a desired scent or beverage of your choice, and what can I tell you? It's not easy being green. So glad to be back here for a 184th episode, and let's meet the posse for the episode. Of course, first the ying to me yang, Matt from Merry Old England. Hi, Matt. Good morning, baby. Oh, Matt, I am fantabulous. How are you, sir? I've got a bad toe. Bad toe? What happened? Stubbed it on the door frame. One of those moments where you're, you're trying to navigate a door that's been there 30 years and you accidentally didn't do it right. Oh. Just slammed my whole foot into it. Ended up singing Cherry Baby by the Four Seasons at the top of my voice. <laughs> if you know that joke, you are my age and you find that hysterical. If you don't, kids, look it up. Cherry Baby, Hello. Four Seasons. Yes, it's very Hello. funny. It's yeah, funny, don't, trust don't, me. Don't ask the kids for this one. No, ask kids <laughs> for this one. And that voice you hear is our new sound, Will. Hi, Will. Hi, Moses. How are you? I'm wonderful, sir. Yourself? Uh, well, not so great. You know, a couple mo- couple weeks ago, I won an all-expenses-paid tour of the uh, Titans team facility, and <laughs> now I'm kind of regretting it. <laughs> Can you taste anything? Uh, it's all kind of a blur, really. Yeah. You might want to check that out. I guess, yeah. I'm sorry to hear that you won that. It's kind of bad timing. But uh, at least maybe you can get some money out of it. I don't know. Uh, and someone who did not win a tour is, of course, Dustin. Hi, Dustin. Yeah, thankfully not. Thankfully not. How are you, sir? I'm better now. I was angry this morning. And then when I got home from work, um, that's a, a story about having animals that maybe I don't want to put on air. <laughs> 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 How was Kona, our 12-man oh. fan jam show fast, um, mascot? Well, Kona was good. It, it wasn't her issue. It was a cat issue. But uh, Kona decided to make it her issue this afternoon, which also pissed me off. So Yeah. Kona will do that. Kona will piss you off. That's why she is our mascot. Yeah. Um, if you didn't know, the Seahawks are wearing their uh, action green uniforms. Not green. Action green. Uh, this weekend against and the Vikings. action, there is a Jackson. Yes, which leads us to... It's not easy. Being green. Oh, Kermit the Frog, ladies and gentlemen. It's not easy being green. Of the football field. Okay. Thank you, Kermit. This is, uh, like I said, our 140th, 184th episode. And let's go and see what's in store for this episode, Fat Tony. Very well. Let's do this thing. Yes, let's get this show started. It's broken into four quarters and a half time. Quarter one will be news. Uh, Core 2 will be uh, over, looking over that victory over the Dolphins and also our prediction challenge at the two-minute warning. Halftime is, of course, the best Seahawks-themed trivia game on the internet. I refer to 12-man fan jam show halftime trivia. Of the world. Of the world. I believe Matt won last week. I did. Yeah, he did. Congratulations. Order that trophy and everything. Uh, quarter three, uh, we give you a lot of information about the Minnesota Vikings. We have our injury report. We have our weather report. We have our um, fashion report. We're also going to compare and contrast Minnesota Vikings with real Vikings. So that will be a little bit of fun for some of us. Quarter four uh, is the debut of uh, also a new feature on the show. Um, it, little Mo has uh, taken the time this week to put in his Madden game on PlayStation 3. Um, PlayStation 4, I apologize. Um, the uh, Seahawk Vikings game on Madden. So we're going to, he played it out and uh, we're going to see how that went before we make our predictions. And then I'm going to post that uh, on our wall with the game day thread so you can compare what actually happened to what happened in Little Mo's mock game challenge. Uh, but before we do all that, of course, we want to remind you to like, share, subscribe to the Seahawk Positivity YouTube channel. Join our Facebook group, 12 Man Fan Jam Show. We're also on Twitter, Seahawk Positivity. Uh, email 12manfanjamshow at gmail.com. 12 Man Fan Jam Show Facebook page. We have a game day thread that we're going to have. We always have during the games. Um, it's a lot of fun to talk about the games on there. And also check us out on uh, iTunes and Podbean if you so desire. And let's get to the first quarter and news. 
Yes, news from around the NFL. It's our news hound, Will, with the 12-man fan jam show news report brought to you by our sponsor, the Seattle Seahawks Dolphin Net. A Seattle t- Seahawk tuna grill sold separately. Will, what you got for us? Well, Moses, uh, you've probably noticed that scoring is way up uh, in the league so far this year. That's what she uh, said. Yes, it is. Uh, part of the reason is teams are going for it on fourth down an awful lot more. Um, so far this season, um, offenses have gone for it on fourth down 154 times and converted 55% of them, which is uh, 85. Uh, that puts them on pace to go for it 626 times and convert 345 of them, um, which is up over last year, both in number of attempts and number of uh, successful conversions. Um, and on fourth and one, it's even more uh, widespread. Uh, teams are going for fourth and one uh, nearly 70% of the time, or 69, dudes. Woo! And they're converting um, over 75% of fourth and one attempts. So um, teams are more and more telling the uh, punt team or field goal unit to stay on the sidelines, and it's paying off so far. Very interesting. Very interesting. Matt, why do you think that they're doing that? Do you think it's because the, the, the defenses overall have been really, really poor? Because they have. Yeah, I think they have. I think if you look at um, – I mean, I, I look at uh, NFL um, game day and watch some of the highlights of other teams and other games, and the defenses are just not there this year for a lot of them. And so you can go for it. Although, as we said in our quick plug to the game day thread that we have for, on Facebook, so if you're struggling for what to do um, on game day, come and have a look and join us on the thread. But, you know, that moment where we did the same thing, where we decided to go on fourth down and turned it over on downs, you know – Taking points off the board sometimes, so be careful about that too. And I was on the record, I believe, on that game day thread saying I did not agree with that call. I was on the record too. I did not agree with that call either. Yeah, yeah, I think we both did not agree with that call. But uh, so yeah, I mean, it's interesting that they're going for it more, but I think it's because it's just there's the defenses are giving up an astounding amount of yardage and points. So uh, I think it's a uh, part of that though. Is I think it's been kind of a long time coming, at least the last several years with all the stats that have come out about when you go for it and when you don't and what part of the field you're on and all that kind of, you know, whatever you want to call it. I know there's a fancy name. I'm escaping me for the moment. <laughs> but um, I think that accompanied with the fact that there's um, a bunch of younger coaches now in the NFL. That's kind. Of, it's not the same old guys that were now they go coordinators. Yeah. The- See the benefits of the um, next generation statistics or whatever it is they're called. I don't know why the term's escaping me right now, but analytics. Um, uh, so I think that's a big part of it. They're willing to to listen to those guys more and uh, play a little more, well, not as conservatively, I'll say. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, Will, what else you got for us? Well, Moses, you know, it's been a a tough year, as we all know, with the pandemic and the uh, economic troubles. And, you know, a lot of us have had to tighten your belts. And even if you're the uh, fourth richest owner in the NFL and 66th richest American, uh, even you're not immune to uh, having to uh, cut back on expenses. And um, uh, Jaguars owner Shad Khan is uh, selling his yacht, Kismet. (laughs) <laughs> for the low, low price of $199 million. Wow. Now, here's what you get for the money. It's a 300-foot yacht. It was built in 2014. There's eight staterooms, which you can sleep a total of 16 people, a helipad, a sun deck, a swimming pool, a full-service spa, and an outdoor fireplace. Damn. So get get your offer in now while you still can. That's, if it throws in a Harrier, I'll pick that up. <laughs> That's Let what you have that. to have after all that. I have to have this. Or... Dustin, just collect 7 million Pepsi points. I'll give you one. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, do you have use for a yacht? No, not really. I can't sail. I get seasick quite a lot. Oh. Um, I'm a sort of plain person. I like to get there quickly rather than do this. Although my, my dream is to still do the whole Atlantic crossing thing like the Titanic, only with a better outcome. Well, and hopefully with a, yeah, with a better outcome and even a bigger hey, ship. You made it most of the way there. Yeah, just swim the last, it, last leg of it. <laughs> most of it doesn't cut it, though, to be honest. I want to get <laughs> That has to be 100%. Yeah, it can't be like yeah. 80%. That's not good. 
because that would be like a really crap mo mo motto for an airline as well, wouldn't it? You know, we get you there safely 80% of the time. 8% of the time, <laughs> we get you 100% safely right. there. That's shit. We'll, we'll be on the ground in 15 minutes. We'll not <laughs> but we're 20,000 feet in the air. A bit quicker than we anticipated, but we will be on the ground <laughs> shortly. <laughs> this is uh this is uh your captain uh if you look uh to your left uh you're gonna see the ground coming up rather quickly uh that's my that's my that's my pilot, that's my, no, that's my my pilot voice <laughs> that's, that's, that's my, bill belichick as a pilot thank you for, thank you for flying <laughs> belichick airlines like yeah. i could do this uh ladies and gentlemen welcome for, to uh seahawk airlines Okay, I'm gonna, I think I should. I think I should stop now. So I will stop. Will, thank you for the news. Anytime, Moses. <laughs> and I will. And I think it's a good time to go to the end of the first quarter. It's the end of the first quarter, bitches. Wow! Coming up on this episode of your Twelve Man Fan Jam show, uh, lots of show left. Uh, Viking game predictions, but next we look back at last week's win over the Dolphins. We'll be right back. After this, don't turn green with envy. You're listening to the 12 Man Fan Jam Show. A Seahawk Positivity Production. That's the fact, Jack! Holy sh! it's the second quarter. All right, um, welcome to the second quarter of episode 810 of your 12 Man Fan Jam Show. The best pregame tradition since getting your grandma face painted for the game. Go, Grandma! And if you're doing this week, you got to be green because it ain't easy being green. So, right, Kermit? Kermit's still here. He's still sick. Kermit? Kermit. When I think it might be nicer being red or yellow or gold or... No, that, that, no. That is the 49er colors. We're not going there. All right. <laughs> Last week, the Seahawks beat the Dolphins 31-23. to I will talk to Kermit at halftime. But before we do that, Will, your thoughts on the game? Well, you know, it, it was kind of uh, kind of a more traditional defensive performance from us because yeah. um, I think it was obvious that after the uh, Dallas game, um, our Car Carol's emphasis was don't give up the big play, stop getting beat deep. So um, we played bend but not break defense uh, without Jamal Adams in there, and I, you know, I think that suits us a little bit better. I'm, I was watching that game. And what, then watching some of the earlier games this season. And I, I think we were a little too blitz happy earlier in the season. I mean, we got Jamal yeah. Adams. We got a shiny new toy we want to play with. Probably. And um, I think our defense is such that it fits, it plays to our strengths more to, you know, just sit back, not give up the big play, make him work for it. And then when Adams gets back in on uh, um, longer plays or, um, you know, still do the still do the blitz. I mean, we've got Adams, we've got this weapon. We need to use him, but maybe not quite as much as we have been. Yeah. Um, go to more, give up the underneath stuff, but not let him get anything big. Uh, blitz a little bit more than we saw this Sunday, uh, but not as much as we saw in the first three games. And I think that'll give us a defense that we can win with. And it did this past Sunday. I mean. It was not our most overpowering offensive performance, but we still did more than good enough. And um, it, was a, it was a pretty good game overall. Not as flashy as some of the earlier games, but a nice solid win against a team that's probably better than their record would uh, have people believe. Yeah, probably. And, and you know, looking at the stats of the offense, uh, Metcalf with 106 yards, more with 95. Uh, Carson, eight yards running. 80. I'm sorry, 80 yards running. Um <laughs> Russell Wilson had 10 incompletions. What the hell's wrong with him, Matt? 10 incompletions in a game. Oh, my God. Ben Sam. Exactly. I, I think some of them, um, probably more on Tyler Locker, who didn't seem to have a great game, to be honest. Uh, he didn't, but David Moore then, kind of, the rest of them kind of picked up. Greg Olson picked up the slat. Five catches yeah, for Olsen, Golson. Absolutely. I was going to say, it just seems strange. that I don't, I don't think Locker was in, in the right headspace. Um, you could see he wasn't uh, targeted as much as the others. Um, I think actually, he was targeted the same as Moore, but two receptions for 39 yards um i mean I, you know it's the offense as long as the offense is functioning i don't mind i'm just going back to what will said i don't mind a deep break that just gives away the occasional field goal but that does mean you have to go and score points on offense you can't yeah. just 
sit back and let your defense win games for you. That isn't going to happen this year. This is not the Seahawks no. defense. Team, you know, this isn't the Legion of Boom. This is the Legion of Get Out There and Bloody Score because if we don't we could be in trouble. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I think that's good. And as long as we've got that offense that can keep going out there and doing that, it's great. Um, I think, um, I think DJ Dallas deserves some. I, I haven't heard. Thank you. Absolutely. Yep. You know, a good, a good uh, performance from him too. So, you know, this is this is good, and also it means that um, Dustin can keep using his little gift emoji for DJ Dallas, which I'm very happy. DJ about. Dallas. <laughs> yeah, that's fun. That was awesome. Uh, Dustin, what did you think? Uh, yeah, like, like Will was kind of saying, there's a little more traditional. Uh, we still put up a fair amount of points. I mean, I think we scored over 30 in every game, I want to say. Yep. Seems right. Yeah, so, I mean, that's a great pace to keep on. The offense just didn't feel like it was clicking the way it has been. So to score, be able to score over 30 points in a game where you don't feel like the offense is really playing well, that's pretty impressive. And then uh, some of the stats were a little bit surprising after the fact. Like, I think Russell threw for 350 or 60 yards or something. Um, he had the one interception, which was a pretty poor decision on that throw. It really yeah. was forced. And, uh, you know, he had a couple of them where he was off on timing. There was one where um, I think it was – I want to say it was – it might have been that first one to Tyler Lockett. No, I think it was the Metcalf, actually, where uh, Russell was late on the throw and he forced it in there and the ball just – it, it wasn't yeah. a reception. It got yeah. dropped. Yeah. Um, but if he'd thrown it on, it was, it was to Metcalf. Cause if he'd have thrown it, it on time, uh, Metcalf would have caught it in stride and the, uh, the corner, it was either a corner or linebacker broke off from his uh, assignment yeah. and then ran back and was able to knock the ball out. Yeah. Cause Lomo um, and I got an argument so, about whether that was a drop or not. And I really didn't think it was a drop, but I say he dropped the ball. He goes, that wasn't a drop. I said, I know it wasn't a drop, but he dropped the ball. It wasn't well thrown pass. You're right. Yeah, it was just it was late, and he tried to muscle it in there, throw it a little hard, which obviously is going to make it a little harder to hold yeah. on to. But uh, for all you know, if you like, I said, if you can score that amount of points when a day when you're off and your quarterback's off and your leading receivers off, still put up 31 points and win the game. Uh, that's great. The defense played fairly well. Um, we didn't give up, you know, seven. 700 yards in the air this game, so that was right. Great. That was a big bonus. Uh, it was progress was on win. the defense. Yeah, 441 defense, yards for the offense, by the way. Pretty good. Yeah. And like I said, progress for the defense. And that's a defense that was missing some of its key players, too. Yeah. So, um, you know, that's just one of those things that defense can really hold on to and build on and hopefully ride that momentum into the next week and play well there, too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I, I want to I kind of toot my own horn here, if I may. I know it's a shock for you guys, but... Uh, yeah. It's not that kind of show, it. Dennis. Yeah, no, well, 12... Um, 12 man fan jam show, like I said, uh, we do a, a, a great game day thread and I want to set it up for you. The Seahawks have just scored the lead 24 to 15 with five minutes left to go in the game. At what point I say to Matt, I say, okay, Matty, you can make the call for an INT from Fitz magic on this very upcoming drive. Matt's always calling for a turnover. So he says, uh, yeah, okay, just trying to get a signal. <laughs> He's trying to get a signal. And guess what? It happens. Uh, I I say, you know. Well, actually, first you say, you write back and you say, I've gotten through to Norton Jr. Do you want a fumble or an INT? I said, INT, please. And then it happened, and you put, you want fries with that. They have an offer on face masks, too. <laughs> and I say, thank you, Maddie. And uh, I said, you got to remind me, we're going to talk about this on the show. So, you know. That was pretty cool. Um, People don't expect me to have this magic power, but I have I have direct telephone lines to all the front stuff. I can get hold of anyone. Like he, does. Of. he does. It's very true. And uh, it, it really should. So if you don't join us for our Facebook uh, game day thread, you're missing uh, Nostra Moses there calling some stuff. But uh, <laughs> but let's see just, how everybody. Look, just, can I just add to that, though? Yes. I didn't actually see the interception because I was too busy writing a <laughs> message on the Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't nice. Didn't see the bloody interception, and then until I saw no, 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 the interception tasted lovely, which is what I think your reply was always something like that. Thank you, Matt. That was oh, delicious, shit. or something. Yeah. Oh shit! What actually happened? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, we've got to talk about this on the show. So <laughs> that's awesome. Next time, ask for money. Yeah, no kidding. I should uh, ask for you know a forty to nothing win. Well, let's see how everybody else did with their predictions of the two minute warning. Holy shit! It's a two minute warning. 
Okay, Two Minute Warrior, it's time for our 12 Man Fan Jam Show prediction challenge. Uh, let's see how we did. Uh, first score 31 23. Three points to Jimmy. He said 31 Seahawk points. And three points to Jose for 23 Dolphin points. So that's pretty good. Uh, prognostication one point to Mark for uh, no Metcalf drop passes. I know that's kind of what we went with it because you had some key drops the week before. Games balls, games balls, game balls to uh, Metcalf, Little Mo, Mike, and Jimmy. I, I gave a game ball to Amadi, Dustin. I thought he really had a nice game. Oh, good deal. I'm going yeah. to give it to him. Over and under was under by half a point. Uh, one point to Mike, Jimmy, Dustin, Will, Chris, and Moses. Meaning that last week it went like this. Jimmy with five. Jose with three. Mike with two. Dustin with two. Little Mo, Mark, Will, Chris, and Moses with one. After three games, individual scores are as follows. Mike Pascal at the top of the heat with 13. Jose at 12. Moses and Jimmy at 10. Will at nine, Little Mo and Dustin at eight, Andy at six, Maddie, Mark, Chris at five, and Carrie at three. Meaning going into this week, the team scores are as follows. Team 12, 51. Team Posse, 43. We're starting to slide behind, gentlemen. Uh-oh. Yeah, that gap is beginning to widen. So uh, we will remind you, as always, on Sunday before the game, we will post everyone's scores, game ball, prognostication, and also the stats from Little Mo's Mock Game Challenge, those will all be on the game day thread. And we want you to join by posting your own score, your game ball, your own prognostication on there. See what happens if you compare to ours and how much better you do than us, because it will happen. And let's go to halftime. Holy sh! it's halftime. All right, we got so much more show coming up. Viking comparisons, game score predictions, mock game challenge. But first... It's another fine edition of 12 Man Fan Jam Show Halftime Trivia, and that's coming up next! You're listening to the 12 Man Fan Jam Show, a Seahawk Positivity production. Yes, it's halftime, and welcome to another fun-filled edition of the best play-along Seahawks-themed trivia game show on the internet. It's time for 12-Man Fan Jam Show Halftime Trivia. And here's your host, the self-appointed Reverend Moses of the St. Paul Island Church of Seahawk Positivity. Yes, thank you, me, and welcome to another fine edition of 12-Man Fan Jam Show Halftime Trivia. Of the world! The trivia game that tests the knowledge of both our posse and our listeners. Our contestants are the posse themselves, Will, Matt, and Dustin. And here come the rules. So here's how the trivia game works. There'll be two rounds of questions. Each contestant answers one question each round. If they get it correct, they get one point. After two rounds of questions, there'll be a final trivia question worth two points. If there's a tie after that, then the tie players go on to a special secret overtime question where the winner becomes reigning 12-man fan jam show trivia champion and also gets a prize chosen especially for them. As an added bonus to those listening on the Seahawk Positivity YouTube channel, the questions and possible answers will be displayed on your screen so you, the viewer and listener, can play along as well. If you do, please let us know how you did on the questions. Remember, there's no Googling, no phone a friend, and please... No wagering. However, there is a lifeline. Before taping this show, my two charming Seahawk fan children, Mosette and Little Mo, did take the quiz as well. If the contestants want to know what the kids said, they can ask that but once and only once during the entire game show and only in the first two rounds. Now let's get ready to play 12-man fan jam show halftime trivia. All right, you guys know the rules. You can ask the kids uh, once per two rounds. And I believe Matt was our winner last week. So, Matt, you can go first. Matt, would you like question number one, number two, or number three? Number three, please. Three, please. Uh, Dustin, one or two? Two. And that leaves number one. Uh, Will, you are number one. One, thank you, Moses. Yeah. Better than being number two. Indeed. The topic, as always, would be Seahawks and Vikings with a little Minnesota fun thrown in there. Here we go. Um, All right, Will, your first question is this. The first time the Seahawks beat the Vikings in Seattle was 1978. 
How many touchdown passes did Seahawk quarterback Jim Zorn throw in that game? Zorny, how many touchdown passes for Zorny against the Vikings in 1978? Um, what are my options? One, two, or three. You know what? I'm feeling optimistic for literally no reason whatsoever, so I'm going to say three. <laughs> Clearly optimistic for no reason whatsoever. So he goes with number three. Well, let's see. Lomo and Mosette said two. You said three. I'm sorry. It was one. He only had one. Yeah. Well, that's 2020 for you. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Amen to that. Uh, Dustin. Yeah. Your question is about the Seahawks and Vikings as well. When the Seahawks and Vikings beat Seattle or played in Seattle in 1987 <laughs> and the Seahawks beat them in 1987, how many touchdown passes did Dave Craig have in that game? So we go from Jim Zorn to Dave Craig. One, two, or three as well. All right. Well, two things. First of all, ha ha, Matt, you don't get the football question. <laughs> <laughs> and two, let's ask the kids. Oh, huh. Okay. Uh, little Mo said three, and Mosette said two. This was passing touchdowns, you said? Yes, for Dave Craig in 1987 as the Seahawks beat the Vikings. Oh, let's see. How about... How, what were, three. What were the numbers? One, two, little three, Mo right? said three. Mosette said two. Nobody said one. You're saying three? I'm saying three. You're saying three. You're going against everything that you've learned from Matt. But you got it. Nice. Three it is. Dustin's on the board. Matt, here you go. Hello. Hello. Matt, your question is this. Uh, what? Who did Prince ask to initially write lyrics to the song that would later become Purple Rain? So he had the song Purple Rain. He asked someone else to write the lyrics at first. Was it Sheena Easton, Michael Jackson, or Stevie Nicks? Who was asked by Prince to originally write the songs for Purple Rain? Sheena Easton, Michael Jackson, or Stevie Nicks? If you're a longtime fan of this show, you know that Sheena Easton and I have a connection, but we won't go into that right now. The most logged out of all of those would be Stevie Nicks from Fleetwood Mac. Okay. Um, I didn't know Stevie Nicks was in Fleetwood Mac. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Come on, the White Witch, she's awesome. Never mind. Oh, son. Oh. He's messing with my melon, man. He's trying to mess with my melon. I was right. I was right. She wasn't. I'll go with Stevie Nicks. He's going to go with Stevie Nicks anyway. Michael Jackson. Lil Mo said Michael Jackson, by the way. And Mosette said Stevie Nicks. And you said Stevie Nicks. Yeah, Stevie Nicks, the White Witch. She's the most, yeah. And uh, true story, she said, uh, I couldn't do it. I was too intimidated. It was too beautiful, and it was Prince. And I just said, dude, I'd love to do it, but I just, I can't. And so he took it back and wrote it. But I didn't think it was Michael, because I didn't think those two got along. Uh, exactly. I didn't think they got yeah. along either. So anyway, so after round one, we have uh, Will at zero, Matt at one, Dustin at one. So we'll go with Matt, four, five, or six. Um, I'll go with oh, okay, six, please. Okay, Dustin, four, five. I'll do four this time. Mix it up a little bit. Ooh. Will, you go five. Surprise me. Okay. <laughs> Dustin. Yeah. How many Grammy Awards did Prince win? Seven, oh, 10, wow. or 14? That gamble didn't pay off. <laughs> no, did not. All right. What were the options? Seven, 10, or 14? He probably won a lot. I'll say 14. I'll say 14. All right. Little, little Mo said seven. Mosette said 10. You said 14. Now he only won seven. Yeah. Oh, wow. Surprise. Well, I think it was all for really? Purple Rain, but yeah. Wow. Sad but true. Yeah. Um, Will? No, that's Metallica. Yeah. Hey, Will, what are the most points the Seahawks have ever scored against the Vikings? 42, 45, or 48? That would be 48, and I'm pretty sure that was the game in 2002 when Sean Alexander ran for five touchdowns in the first half. Oh. That'll, uh, that'll ramp up the points pretty quick. The knowledge he has is amazing. Freaking show off. Mm -hmm. Unless I yeah, it. but here's the thing. It was 1996. You were off on the year, but yeah. Oh, well, okay. What? No, 1996? What? Sean Alexander. 96. 
There's no way. Sean Alexander didn't play for him in 96. No, he didn't play in 96, but it was nine. Yeah, he did. Didn't he? No, Sean he didn't. Alexander in 96? No, no, it was 2002. 2002. I don't know. Listen, it, there was 48 points. You're right. You just want to take the <laughs> win and just move on. Challenge I, I need I need all the extra points I can get, okay? <laughs> Somebody throw the challenge flag. We'll come back to the third quarter with an answer. Will, uh, you got the point. That's all that matters. And now Matt's playing, and we're moving on. Yeah. Matt, when the Seahawks beat the Vikings in 2018, and they did beat them in 2018, <laughs> how many sacks did both teams have? One, two, or three? They both had the same amount of sacks. One, two, or three? What was that? How many sacks did Sean Alexander have? Is that what it was? Yeah, in, in 1982. <laughs> oh, I'll go with two. You're going to go with two? Yeah. Mosette went with two. Oh, what did he check? <laughs> Little Mo went with three. <laughs> it doesn't bloody matter! Must remember to check. You got it anyway. God. Nice. Tough crowd, I'm telling you. All right, so. <laughs> If we care here, um, we got Matt at two, Will at one, and Dustin at one. But don't worry, gentlemen. And do you know why? Question. It's time for the final question. We're two points. Um, it is a high low. First one without going over obviously gets it. Close without going over gets it. And if everybody's over, whoever's the closest gets two points and becomes 12 man fan jam show halftime trivia champion of the world. Here we go. Uh, the order will go uh, Dustin first, Will second, and Matt third. Here we go. Dustin? Yeah. The question is this. Uh -huh. Seahawks played the Vikings in 2019, and they did play him in 2019. <laughs> okay. Yes, How many rushing did. yards did Chris Carson have in that game? How many rushing yards for Chris Carson? Uh, is this one of those trick questions where he was actually injured and didn't play? No, he does have yards. More than one, less than 500. <laughs> All right, what did the kids say? The kids said you need to answer your own damn question. That's what they said. All right, let's go. He played well last year up until, you know, the thing. So I'll say 105. 105. Will. Uh, 123. 105, 123, Matt. 10 yards. He's doing the price is right. <laughs> Not quite. I didn't get for one yard. I don't want to insult him. <laughs> <laughs> As if ten yards. This is, you know what this is. This is just trash talking. Is what this is. This is just trash talking. When the Seahawks played in 2019, Chris Carson had 102 yards. <laughs> you know, it just gets ridiculous every once in a while, folks. Love it. Dustin, what was your guess? 102. Oh, wow. I think what I'm going to start doing is whatever my guess is, I'm just going to subtract like five and go from there. That's what you need to do. I think so. Hey, Matt, order a trophy. Oh, shit. There it is. Congratulations, Matt. Thank you. <laughs> and thank everyone for another crowd-pleasing, heart-stopping, award-winning, somewhat factual, but not really, edition of your 12-man fan jam show halftime trivia. Of the world. Of the world. We'll be back with some more wonderful info that you need that is factual for the game right after this. Golden Girls, take us out as usual. <laughs> I'm glad somebody's enjoying yourself over there, Matt. You're listening to the 12 Man Fan Jam Show, a Seahawk Positivity production. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. Holy sh**, it's the third quarter. Okay, for, for the record, Seattle beat Minnesota on September 29th, 2002 by the score of 48 to 23. Thank that you. was the Sean Alexander game. Okay. Thank you. I don't know or care what they did in 96. So it wasn't 96. It was 2002 well, and I was wrong. They may have scored 48 points in 96, but they also did in 2002 and that's all I care about. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. 96, they scored uh, 42 points. They're 23 to 42. That's probably why I had that in my head. And same score for the Vikings. Yeah, that's the ticket. All right. Challenge is accepted. Bill is not charged a time there. And still gets the points anyway, because he got the right points. The question was points, not the year.
who throws a challenge when they got there when they got it right? I do. Yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. Absolutely. All right, so it was two thousand two. Right? There's obviously something worth challenging. It was two thousand two. Forty-eight points. Will got the points. Okay. Matt, congratulations! You got the win. And how many Thanks. sacks did Sean Alexander get in that game again? About seventeen. Oh, wow! Wow, busy but, man. But that we're we're gonna really we're good. gonna. But we're going to put that game behind us now. And we're going to focus on the game coming up with the Vikings. As we welcome you all to the third quarter of the 12-man fan jam show. Hey, you! Yes, you grabbing a mini soda from the fridge. See what I did there? Like, share, and subscribe to Seahawk Positive YouTube channel. Please join our Facebook group, 12-man fan jam show. Do it now before the Viking funeral on Sunday. Yeah, you betcha they're going to be a funeral right after the Gopher game. All right. That's my Minnesota accent. Yeah, we got the Gopher game. You're going to the oh, Gopher God. game. You got tickets to the Gophers. That's kind of a Fargo accent. I, I like Fargo going down there. Yeah, yeah, you're in the state over, maybe. All right. Anyway, it's time to get you ready for this Sunday game between your Seattle Seahawks and those and those Minnesota Vikings. Yeah, at uh, eight twenty-five p.m. Eastern time. That's five twenty-five p.m. on the West Coast. And Matt, what time are we talking over in England there? <laughs> It's very, very late. <laughs> it's a very late. It's it's past our bedtime. Yeah, got to go to bed. You betcha. All right. Well, listen, since the Vikings are coming to Seattle, I can't get out of this. Since the Vikings are coming to Seattle, I thought as a public service, I would help you tell the difference between a Viking and a Minnesota Viking in a, an episode of Compare and Contrast. We haven't done this for a while. Uh, I take two things and I compare them and I contrast them to help you tell the difference between real Vikings and Minnesota Vikings. Because Vikings were real people. And Minnesota Vikings are a real football team. But in many ways, they're similar. And in many ways, they're different. So, uh, for example, real Vikings, the Viking society was divided into three socioeconomic parts. They were the Thralls, the Carls, and the Jarls. I'm not mm -hmm. making this up. Minnesota Viking offensive philosophy is also divided in three parts. The run for no gain, the incomplete pass, and then the punt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Dustin, for that muffled titter. <laughs> Dustin, get his yeah. titters out. You're welcome. I've told him about this. <laughs> yeah. Get him out. Get the titters out. Dustin's got his titters out. Whoa. Uh, Hello. <laughs> Hello. All right, it's not that kind of show. Not that kind of show, Moses. I don't think it's it's still it's still not that kind of show. All right. Um, oh, there's another. Got a couple more. Here you go. Uh, Real Vikings at the age of twenty, an unmarried woman reached legal majority and had the right to decide her place of residence. It was regarded as her own person before the law. Uh, in Minnesota Vikings, after the age of twenty, Minnesota Viking fans reached the right to move on to be a fan of a real NFL football team if they'd like. <laughs> so, <laughs> they convert to Packerism. Yeah. Uh, real Vikings, a route that the Vikings found to have a direct pathway from Scandinavia to Constantinople and Baghdad while traveling the Baltic Sea was known as the Highway of Slaves. For Minnesota Vikings, the route the Vikings take to Seattle for a football game is often called by them as the Highway to Hell. <laughs> um, I thought the Highway to was Constantinople. You say you say that I say I don't know. Uh, and finally, real right. Vikings raped, pillaged, and plundered. Minnesota Vikings drop, fumble, and blunder. So that is the difference between Vikings <laughs> and Minnesota Vikings. More more tittering. While we're tittering, let's see how healthy these teams are by turning to our own doctor, Doctor Dustin, with the Twelve Man Fan Jam Show injury report. Doctor Dustin, tell us the news. Doctor, 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 give me the news. All right, well, we're going to start with these tittering Vikings first. <laughs> uh, the ones from Minnesota. There's my... my <laughs> oh, they're coming, from, they're coming from Minnesota, are they? Minnesota, yeah. Um, that, that's all you get from me, though, that one word. I, I feel like I can do that one word, and that's it. So, uh, so I, I think the biggest news out of this one is that they're... Um, their rookie return specialist, KJ Osborne, he's going to be out. He's a wide receiver, had a hamstring injury, has not participated in practice, uh, will not participate in the game. Oh, got the sore hamstring. Yep, no Sunday night festivities for him. Um, they have two players that are questionable. Both are in the secondary, which always bodes well for Russell Wilson. They have uh, cornerbacks Chris Boyd and Holton Hill. 
Uh, Boyd's dealing with a hamstring. He had limited participation in practice. And Hill has a foot injury. Same deal, limited participation in practice. That's so good overall, news. these guys are looking pretty healthy as far as the injury report goes. Um, and then there's the Seahawks. Uh-huh. So uh, we only have one player out this week uh, that's already listed as out anyways. That's going to be Jamal Adams. Uh, he hasn't practiced all week. Um, I don't know if that's because, you know, the bye week's coming up and they're just really, really doing what the Seahawks do with some of these injuries and uh, giving it time and kind of babying it a little bit. I hope so. But, yeah, he's definitely not playing. Um, then we got uh, questionable players, several of them. Um, and they're all guys that were listed last week as questionable, if I'm not mistaken. And it's the same injury, so there's nothing new. Um we got two guys that didn't participate in practice. One is Lano Hill. He's got that back slash kind of hip area injury that he's dealing with, which is pretty concerning, to be honest, if it's still bothering him, um, you know, like this, keep him going. Uh, linebacker Jordan Brooks has a knee issue. He didn't participate. Actually, I want to – I almost want to – I don't listen to me. I don't know if you guys do. Last week wasn't it an <laughs> For him? Sure. Yes, it was. No, it was, it was. It's been a knee. Was it a knee? Okay. There's so many. I'm getting them all confused. Apparently, his leg. Something wrong with that leg. Yep. It, it, he's got an owie. He will not be. Uh, he didn't participate in practice. Probably not playing in the game. Listed as questionable. See, this then is why you listen to this side. show. Top notch exactly. information. Go yeah. ahead. Owies. Owies hurt. So there's three more guys listed. They're all limited participation in practice. Um, Carlos Hyde has that shoulder injury he had last week. Quinn Dunbar is still dealing with the knee injury. And then uh, Mike Potty has a knee injury, but we threw a new one in there for him this week. He had some back spasms. Oh, great. So, lucky him. Um, but uh, Sam, Pete sounded pretty optimistic about him being able to play. So I think, uh, I think Mike will be there. And that is it for the injury report. That's everybody. You think Mike will be there? You guys are close. You call him Mike, do you? Yeah. Hey, absolutely. Mike, how you doing? I'll be there, yeah. Dustin. Okay, Mike, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's like, you know, people that, people that work with Robert De Niro in the show business call him Bobby. Have you ever noticed that? They call him, I, I have, and no one else in the world has, but I'm telling you, when you work with Robert De Niro, all of a sudden he's Bobby all of a sudden. I'm like, where the hell did that come from? He's Robert De Niro. Yeah, me That's and Bobby were going question. out the other night. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Just shut up and... And Probably more fun bill. to say Bobby with like a Minnesota accent. So, oh yeah, the Bobby De Niro. He's a hell of an actor. He is. Yeah, you betcha. <laughs> there you go. Um, and now it's time for uh, <laughs> to take a look at how the weather is going be for this game by turning to a guy living in England to save us. It's time for the Tall Man Fan Jam Show weather and fashion report with Matt from Old England. Oh, Matt. Can I just start this whole weather thing off right, by saying that I've been watching How to Make a Murderer on Netflix, which is based in Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> yes! You said exactly like that. Um, you, right. you're, you're learning how to be a murderer, are you? <laughs> you're going to take that knife there, you're going to put it in my back, are you? Yeah, that's, let's I'm see glad, that. I'm glad this starts off funny because I haven't written a particularly funny weather forecast today. Sorry. This is your joke. You, you may proceed. I shall proceed. Uh, yes, thank you, Moses. Well, let Russ cook is this year's must-have motto on a T-shirt, apparently. <laughs> so it must be time to head back to the link for a little home cooking of our own. Now, when it comes to Seattle, the safest weather forecast you can ever give is this one. It's either going to rain or it isn't. <laughs> Every other possible weather outcome is technically classed as extreme weather. Now, I can tell you that I have on very good authority. It's going to rain a lot. Oh. Like all day from the from the beginning of the game to the after the game. Oh my! Temperatures will be in the mid fifties with mm. light winds, moderate southeasterlies. It's going to be wet and chilly in the wind. Oh. Now, what to wear for this game? Well, it doesn't really matter, of course, because this is the third home game for the Seahawks, so we're all still technically at home sporting sofa wear, <laughs> um, as there'll be no fans there. But of course, so get comfy, get your action green slippers ready, because I all know you own a pair of action green slippers. And your action green onesie. Get some snacks on standby. And remember, if you're missing that game day experience, you can always join us on the 12th Man Fan Jam Facebook game day thread. Or you can throw a Hawks jersey over all of that and scream at your TV on your own. The whole game. You could just join us. That's much more fun. As for me, if I was going to this game, I would have to go as everyone's favourite historically inaccurate Norse god, Thor. 
the Avengers. Because clearly, since I've been working out, I now definitely have the Chris Hemsworth physique these oh, days. Yeah. If you squint, one eye closed, <laughs> the dark room. <laughs> With all that being said, it looks like it's going to be perfect Seahawks weather. So Moses, it's back over to you. Fantastic. So so glad to hear it. Uh, and just another Seahawk, another Seahawk weather uh, weather game. Sounds like I didn't know that. So that'll Maybe make the predictions. Game. That'll Maybe make the predictions a little interesting. Yeah. So it's going to rain a lot there then. Uh, uh, Stop. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you guys uh, for your, your injury reports and your fashion reports and your weather reports. No problem. And now, please be upstanding and welcome our own Reverend Moses from the St. Paul Allen Church of Seahawk Positivity for his sermon for this upcoming game. Oh, Reverend Yes, it is I, the self-appointed Reverend Moses of the St. Paul Allen Church Seahawk Positivity. How is everyone doing this evening? Doing well, sir. Very well, thank you, Reverend. There's a rumor it's like not that kind of show, but we're gonna we're gonna change that in a minute. Now, look, look who is the top of the NFC West. Why? Why it is the Seahawks? Isn't that nice? And on top, just the way Maddie likes it. I know. I, I've heard. <laughs> and not Dustin though, because his little feet dangle in the air like a toddler trying trying to get out of a crib. Well, yeah, it's relaxing to have your yeah. feet blow through the breeze. Just swinging in the breeze like a couple of tiny doll legs. It's 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 kind of embarrassing, but we'll move on. Let's get some church up in here. Friends, I'm so glad to be once again here as we return home triumphant and escaping Florida, not only without gator bites, but with a victory and the one true power of Seahawk positivity. Reading from the book of the 2020 NFL season, chapter 5, verses 3 to 12. They did return home triumphant indeed, but upon returning home, they were met by those in ships. They wore horns on their heads and were the color of purple. They, came, they were from the land of many lakes and wished to defeat us in our land, but the power of Seahawk positivity was too strong for them. They did prepare a Viking funeral for their demise, and there was happiness in our land. Yes, this is the word, my brethren. Oh, we do have the power that flows within us all. Can you feel the power and strength? Can you feel it? Raise your hands if you feel it. Go on. Raise them up, my brothers. Yeah, raise them like you want tickets to the Gophers hockey game. You betcha. Now, if your hands are raised and you believe in the power of Seahawk positivity, let's hear it. I'm in nice and loud. I'm in. Oh, and if you believe in the power to give our defense the ability to make Kirk Cousins say, I don't like that. Let's hear it. I'm in nice and loud. I'm in. in. Yes, and if you believe in the power to give our offense the ability to score on the Vikings more than Prince at a small man's love connection. Let's hear an I'm in nice and loud. Dustin, you've been to a lot of those. Let's hear an I'm in. <laughs> I, I'm in. Yes. <laughs> That's the power to put those hands down. We are loud and proud. Our voices, our presence are always felt. Those purple people eaters are about to, to starve in our house because we ain't going to let them win. Cleolanda, honey, do me a favor. Do that voodoo that you do so incredibly well. Yes! <laughs> Go forth. Spread the good word of Seahawk Positivity. This has been your South Point River, Most St. Paul Church of Seahawk Positivity. Praise Largent. Praise Cortez Kennedy. Praise Walter Jones. Praise Kenny Easley. Go Hawks. And that's the end of your third quarter. You're listening to the 12-man fan jam show. I don't know why, but you are. We will be right back after this with our predictions for that Vikings game. Don't go anywhere. All right? We'll be right back. All of a sudden, I'm Italian. What the hell is that? You're listening to the 12 Man Fan Jam Show. A Seahawk Positivity production. If there's a better use for the internet, I haven't found it. Holy sh! it's the fourth quarter. Yeah, you betcha. It's the fourth quarter, the final quarter of this episode of your 12-man fan jam show. In this quarter, we make our predictions, our prognostications, and, of course, the game balls for that upcoming game between the Vikings and them Seahawks. Uh, that is an 825 game for Eastern Time, 525 on the West Coast, and way early in the morning if you're in England, apparently. Seahawks are a seven-point favorite, and the over/under will be at fifty-seven and a half. Unbelievable! We usually do our picks, but before we do our picks, we want to debut a new feature in the fourth quarter, and this one is um, called Little Mo's Mock Game Challenge. Here's how it's going to work: Each week, Little Mo will play his upcoming Seahawks game on his PlayStation and report to us what happens. He will set the game up for fifteen minutes long. He doesn't play; he just sets it up and lets it go. 
So this week it was the Seahawks against the Vikings, and uh, he was happy to report that in his game, the Seahawks won 30 to 9. It was 17 to 3 at halftime. Wilson was 24 out of 30 for 274 yards and three touchdowns, seven rushes for 63 yards. Carson, 24 rushes for 123 yards, five receptions for 39 yards. Olsen, Old Man Olsen, seven receptions for 71 yards and a touchdown. Lockett, five receptions for 106 yards and a touchdown. Metcalf, four receptions for 30 yards and a touchdown. Seahawks had four sacks in the game. Puna had two. Collier had one. Reed had one. Bobby Wagner with 12 tackles. For the Vikings, Cousins, 236 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Dalvin Cook, 14 rushes for 69 yards. And Thielen with five catches for 60 yards. Hopefully that happens because that's a 39 win. What we're going to do is we're going to place this in our game day thread with all this other information so that you can see how everybody does. Um, in in our positive prediction challenge and how the mock game, see how it went. So, uh, but now let's go back to what we usually do, and that is time for, of course, our picks. And we start with Team Twelve and Little Mo. Of course, Little Mo said forty two thirty five. Russell Wilson four TD passes, game ball to Metcalf. Jose said uh, score thirty seven twenty seven Hawks, game ball to Lockett. Prognostication: Shakim gets three plus tackles. I'll keep count. I can do that. Don't worry about it, Jose. Mike Pascal, the leader right now. Hawks 31. Yikes 23. Game ball to lock it. And a prediction, Russ will have four touchdowns. And uh, that's, I'm uh, not Sassman Mark, sorry. Mark Ty Turner. Hawks 35, Vikings 27. Game ball to Wagner. The Hawks will fumble for the first time, but the defense will have three turnovers. So I'm going with the three turnovers for the defense. Carrie. Boo. So the House of Pain, and that's her house. Her last name's Pain. The House of Pain is down and out with the Rona. I've heard that she's okay, but her and her husband have tested positive and he's symptom asymptomatic now. So she tested negative so far. No symptoms crossing fingers. We are too carry. I hope everything's okay. That being said, I'm afraid football's not much on my mind right now, but I'm going to give it a go. Seattle 34, Minnesota 21 pronostication. Ryan Neal continues his interception streak with a pick six game ball to Carson. Go Hawks. Jimmy Hawks will be asking cousins. You like that score? 21. 31 23 Hawks, game ball to lock it, prognostication. Carson, two rushing touchdowns. Now to Team Posse, the two that are not here. Andy, Sunday Night Football, Canadian Thanksgiving. This shall be a wonderful Sunday. All this talk about our defensive injuries and the Vikings tearing us apart. We are going to give up a pile of yardage on tight end passage over the middle, but oh well. They'll try to run the ball on us, and that won't work. Seattle 41, Minnesota 17. As Wilson shreds the young secondary for five touchdown passes, game ball to DK Metcalf. Prognostication is the D forces three turnovers. Chris, uh, here we go. And welcome Captain Kurt to Seattle under the bright emerald lights of Seattle for Sunday Night Football. Score 32 19, Seattle. Game ball to Swain. And I love this prognostication. Love, 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 love it. His prognostication is that the score will finish, the final score will finish as a scoregami for the Seahawks. If you don't know what that is, their score gami is all the possible scores you can have in the NFL from two to nothing to a hundred to a hundred and you know, two, three to two, three to three, five to three, all that. So he's predicting that the score will be a score that's never been in the history of the NFL before. So score gami is his prediction. I prognostication. I love it. I'm really pulling for a score gami for Chris, not just because he's on our team, but because that is really cool. All right, Dustin, what do you got for me? Oh, Dustin's not here. Dustin has passed away. So while we <laughs> attempt to resurrect Dustin. I'm sorry. My mic was muted. I apologize. I did that, not realize. That's okay. It happens to the best of us, Dustin. Yeah, I forgive me. Yeah. Um, Dustin, you yeah. got a prediction for us now that you are with us. But, uh, thank you for rising from the dead to be back with us. I appreciate that. Ah, you're welcome. It's what I do. Yeah. Um, yeah uh, I'm going to say the Seahawks are going to win this. I think this time they're going to get up in the 40s. It'll be 42-21. 42-21. Um, and this is more of a want than maybe something that I necessarily think will happen, but I think Will Disley's going to get going. He's going to get my game ball and he'll get two touchdowns this game. So never mind that we're down by eight points. You just want to, I want something to, out there. Well, it, I think it'd be good for the team long-term if Disney was able to get it going. He hasn't I agree. done, he hasn't been the factor that he was, uh, before his previous he hasn't season. been i don't think he's been on the field very much for that too but we'll see yeah. yeah hopefully you're right i agree i was just i've almost said that during we were talking about the game, the game. i said you know we haven't heard much from disley yeah um speaking of uncle will hi will hi moses how are you 
Good. How are you, sir? What you got for us? Well, I think uh, I expect a Seahawks victory of 37-24. Um, the running back we're facing, Dalvin Cook, leads the NFL in uh, rushing yards. Yeah. But my prognostication is we will not let Dalvin Cook. Um, the Snacks Harrison, no relation, um, the Snacks Harrison uh, – Enhanced Seahawks defense will hold Cook to fewer than 50 yards rushing. That's my Woo! Um, that's my prognostication. Nice. And my game ball goes to Tyler Lockett, who is going to bounce back from last week in a big way. Excellent. Wow, I like that. That's good stuff. Hello, Matt. Hello. How are you? I'll find you. Oh, not not unwell, thank you. You got a score for good, me? Good. I do. So in honor, actually, I'm going to go um, with Chris on this. I've, I found I was going to go 42-24, but I'm going to go with a score regami. The closest score regami I can get with this is 42-25. to 25. That would nice. be a score regami. So 42-25. to 25, Nice. That would be the score. So if I get that, Chris also gets his um, score regami. Nice. Um, my game ball is going to rain, so this has to be a run game. I can't see this becoming a, a, a massive pass game for, for slippery balls and all that. So I'm going to go with Carson. And I'll go for two touchdowns for Carson. All right. Well done, everyone. Thank you. Oh, but wait. It's my turn, isn't it? Well, let's see what I got here. Let me... Let me look through the papers here. All right. Uh, Seahawks return home from a successful and dis disease-free road trip. Remind you of uh, <laughs> your time you served our nation abroad, Dustin? Do you have a few of those? Yes, thank you. <laughs> a few successful and disease-free road trips? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you're, uh, yeah thank you for serving our country, by the way, in all seriousness. <laughs> yeah, no all problem. right, back, back to the fun. <laughs> your 4-0 Seahawks are flying high right now, but before they can fly – into a much-needed bye week to heal all of their numerous wounds, as pointed out by Dr. Dustin. They have to play the Minnesota Vikings. The Vikings come into Seattle 1-3, winning their first game last week against a terrible Texan team from Houston. Boy, does Houston have a problem. The Vikings are led on offense by their running attack, led by the oft-injured but still very effective Dalvin Cook, as Kurt, you like that Cousins, is proving once again that his shelf life is about as long as mayonnaise let out in the sun. I hate mayo. God, I hate mayo. I'm sorry. I digress. I, Mayo makes me sick. All right. <laughs> Defensively, Yannick Nagakwe, whose last name Nagakwe sounds like I just drank a shot of something I'll never drink again. You ever take a, oh, Nagakwe. Anyway, he has three sacks in four games, so we have to watch him. But let's face it. Even the late great prince who loved sports, by the way, would turn his little purple bike the other way instead of watching these guys play on, on Sunday. And, you know, Prince liked to get crazy. <laughs> And we're going to get crazy like Prince shredding a guitar solo. Watch our Seahawks shred the Vikings Sunday night. Yes, watch my game ball, Greg Olson. Show Maddie that age is just a number, buddy. Watch the Seahawks defense cause Kirk Cousins to not like throwing not one, but two interceptions. And watch our Seahawks win. That's right. They're going to win by a final score of... Seattle Seahawks, 38. Minnesota Vikings, 21. You like that, Cousins? Do you like that, buddy? Do you? Hey, Prince, do me a favor. Tell these people what the Vikings are going to say at the end of this game. Take me away. Book it. Well, all right. It's time now, it looks like, it is time to put another wonderful and amazing 12-man fan jam show to a sad close. And we hope you uh, enjoyed wasting some time with us. We hope you laughed a little. We hope you learned a little something along the way. What did we learn on this show? We learned a lot on this show, actually. Uh, we, we did learn um, that Russell makes it hard to hold on sometimes. I, that sounds like a song. Um, we learn who's going for it a lot. We learn who's going to, uh, toot his own horn. And, uh, we, we learned who was getting the titters out. <laughs> and finally we learned it's not that kind of show. So 
On behalf of my partner in crime, Matt, our beloved news hound, Shadowhawk Will, Statsman Mark, wherever he is, Dustin as the beaver, Roger Goodell, Moses, little, Moses, Moset, Little Mo, Jimmy <laughs> Chris, Tom Lucas, Jose, Carey, Mark, Ty, Turner, Andy, Northern Hawk, Kona, Chuck Foreman, Wade Wilson, Ahmad Rashad, Kermit the Frog. This is Moses saying, as always, Go Hawks! Go Hawks! Go Hawks! Yeah, we got to play the Vikings up there on uh, Sunday Night of Football. Yeah, you betcha. <laughs>